Hello, hello! Welcome back to MTD CNC North America. As you can see from this massive building behind me, I am at SW North America, and I have the great pleasure of spending some time with my buddy Kurt. We're going to talk a little bit about the company, how it started, where it's gone since then. We're going to talk about some of the unique trends and the unique capabilities of the SW machine. So, Kurt, thank you so much for being a part of MTD. Tony, thanks for coming here today. We picked a beautiful day to be outside filming. Why not take advantage of it? Thanks for getting on just one more plane to make it here to Detroit. <laughs> it's absolutely a pleasure, and you're right. It is a gorgeous day, first time shooting outside, although I might push for it a little more in the future because this is awesome. So let's talk about SW. Obviously, we're standing in front of a really large building. I've walked through the tour. It's phenomenal. The offices, the, the warehousing you have, the machines, the turnkey center, all that stuff that goes along with it. But how did it start? When did it start? What's it all about? So, you know, in the big scheme of things, SW is not the oldest company. You know, where I was coming from before, we had roots going back 150 years in the German machine tool space. Um, we started in 1985 with Heckler & Koch and they had their own division to make their own components which built the machines for the components and we eventually grew out through some ownership changes this that and the other and we began to grow little by little um, i'd like to focus on the history here in the united states um, we started selling machines through a distributor back in the 90s you know and there's a few machines here and there but nothing really substantial late 90s we got a little bit more traction but still just not huge sales, still serving our customers for their unique niche needs where they, they needed our type of product. Um, and even through the 2000s where we had a different ownership of the SW Group, we still just couldn't get over a certain hump. Um, certainly we had a lot of automotive customers, a lot of uh, transplants here within the United States from Germany and whatnot. Um, but our real nexus, where we really stood out and took that big step is in 2016 when we announced that we were gonna break ground here in New Hudson. You know, that was the time that we really stated to our customers, hey, we're here for real, we're not going away. We're gonna dedicate our financial resources to establishing this facility in New Hudson so that we can serve you locally. Um, so 2016 was really our breakout year. And ever since then, it's been a very nice, steady growth upward. Um, 2017 is when we had our grand opening, so almost four years ago, and it's been a great story ever since then. So our facility here in New Hudson, you know, it's plenty large enough to, uh, to bring in 50 machines a year. Um, we're not just distributing machine tools for SW, we're a wholly owned subsidiary, and it's not just bringing in naked machines, and we're not doing just turnkeys over in Germany, rather here. So we have a full staff to support turnkey projects, on the project management side, the mechanical engineering side, um, you know, everybody you need in the process to support those types of complex systems. Aside from the turnkey side of the machines with fixturing and tooling and process and cycle time and 1.67 CPK, uh, we also have a group within our organization doing nothing but automation. Um, so there are times uh, here in the last six months where we've had more dollars on our shop floor in automation and systems than actual machines sold to customers. So it's a really testament to how we've built up the automation and the system side of the business, not just the machines. That's great. And if I may add to that, and correct me in the places that I'm wrong, but having had a tour through this amazing facility, you've also invested a lot in making sure that you have a, a, a nice warehouse to support local customers instead of the long lead times that happen sometimes from shipping overseas, as well as developing the younger kids to come through your academy as well and make sure it's supported on that end also, right? Yeah, we, we definitely needed to invest in a lot of different areas of the company, and one of them certainly is spare parts. Um, we have three to four million dollars in spare parts and it's easy to say that it's a big number it sounds good but the reality is we have a very robust process of managing our max min levels of all the parts that go on all of our machines uh, we have quarterly reviews of which parts maybe we need more of should we adjust those max mins every monday we get a shipment from germany to restock automatically it's a really well-oiled system and couldn't be prouder and more happy with the way it works obviously spare parts are always funny can't be 100% covered, but we do a pretty darn good job here. That's on the back side of the business. Um, but as you alluded to, we have a very robust auto uh, apprentice program. Um, I think one of the big differentiations for us is we have a manager just for our apprentice program. And he only has six students right now, and two of them just started. Um, but to truly dedicate a manager to make sure that that syllabus, that agenda of their three-year term going back between school and here is managed and they're properly learning and they're prepared for the test and all that really shows our commitment to developing these resources 
at a very green level and getting them on board the SWA. So very important. Now, at the beginning, you mentioned when you were coming here in the U.S. and the growth, automation's a big deal with SW. And it's, I think, partly because, and you know better than I do, the dual and the quad spindles. And I think it's really cool that you guys, in my head, while I'm thinking about a machine, instead of just running one part at a time, I'm running two or four or whatever that might be. But you talk about automation. What are some of the other trends that go along with the industry right now? What are you guys seeing at SW? So we are primarily an automotive company. About 70% of our business is automotive. Certainly, you know, we, we are working on becoming more diversified in other markets. Uh, we have a nice footprint in the firearms business, uh, semiconductor, uh, hydraulics, so on and so forth. But, you know, at the end of the day, our core business is automotive. Um, so historically, our dual and quad spindle machines that serves automotive space perfectly, right? Automotive is always going to be dealing with high volume type applications. You couple that with a robust, rigid, German design machine tool, and you're just in a winning situation, right? You just are able to put out that super high volume in a very efficient, compact footprint. You know, it's a big benefit of going two spindles versus four. When you're carpooling, two people, four people in a car, one car. It's more efficient on gas whatever you're still getting there in the same cycle time but you're arriving with four people versus just two so you know historically that we've served the automotive business very very well um, and the majority of our machines today still are dual spindle machines however um, there are certain industry trends as well that are kind of you know helping us uh, broaden our designs of our machines that we're bringing to market in today's industry and speaking of some of those designs I believe when we're talking quad or dual spindle heads, they all worked in unison, but now they can be individual as well, just due to some of those changes where you guys are doing that, That's right? That's correct. On some machine sizes, uh, for a long time, we've uh, had some ability to have independent Z axes, which allows you to, um, let's say, do the finish work on tight tolerance uh, features of a component with just one tool versus two. It just gives you totally independent X, Y, Z. Um, but you're absolutely correct on some of our newer machines today. We've we tweaked the design a little bit, added in some uh, um, flexibility to the machine so that we have totally independent X, Y, Z uh, correction ability for both spindles at the same time. So certainly that helps with our, our customers as they're dialing in machines, helps our guys as we're dialing in machines. We've got a lot of moving parts, complex components, tricky fixtures, every little bit helps. Well, Kurt, we've talked a whole lot about the machines and how valuable they are to the industry, the two, you know, two spindles, four spindles, some of those unique benefits. But let's talk a little bit more about the industry trends themselves and how you see it. So again, you know, focusing on automotive, you know, what's, what's the big discussion today? It's all about electrification, right? Two years ago, three years ago, when I'm going to conferences, when I'm going to open houses, it's, it was always in the background. Yeah, electrification's coming. You know, maybe by 2040, you'll have a significant impact on our business as machine tool builders. Two years ago, that would have been my, my discussion point as well. I would say by January or February of this year, for me, I've just seen so much change so dramatically. What kind of change? I see that there are actual programs with actual investment, you know, dozens of machine tools being purchased at a time to support electrification. Looking back to 2020, in fact, more than 50% of our machines that we sold were committed to e-vehicles. That's crazy, right? So what does that mean for SW? You know, there's a lot of conversation that electrification is bad for machine tool companies. You know, fewer moving parts, you know, less weight. That means, you know, less chips to be cut. Less chips to be cut means you need fewer machine tools. Ugh. I don't know if you want to submit that resume now, right? <laughs> so how's SW kind of playing this market? Well. Let's talk about electrification. Anytime you talk about electrification, you talk about efficiency. And anytime you talk about efficiency, you have to talk about light weighting. You have this really big, heavy battery, and the heavier the battery is, or the heavier the vehicle is overall, the fewer miles you're going to get, the lower your range is. So to offset that very dense, uh, heavy battery that you need to power the vehicle, you have to offset that by reducing weight in the vehicle. So if you have to reduce weight in the vehicle, well, what do you do? You change your materials from iron and steel to aluminum or magnesium based products, primarily aluminum. So, well, what does that mean for SW? So in the long history of SW, we've had traditionally ball screws and then eventually linear motor machines. And linear motors, 
bring so many benefits to the processing of a component. Linear motors are faster, nearly twice as fast in the, uh, the velocities. Uh, they're nearly twice as fast for your acceleration, deceleration rates. So when you get into components, when you have several tools, you know, a dozen tools, two dozen tools, all the zipping around from position to position and tool change, you really start to have a much faster machine. So a faster machine when we're already doing two parts, hey, this is winner, winner, chicken dinner when we start going to alum aluminum. So, you know, there are a lot of changes. And yes, so there are some components that are specific to EVs, such as battery trays, uh, you know, the housings for the, 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 the electric motors, whatever it is, all aluminum. Um, but it's also the structural components, knuckles, shock towers, you name it. So many components are changing from um, steel and iron to aluminum. So with our solutions on the linear motor side, coupled with dual or four spindle machines, we're very much separated from the vast majority of the machine tool makers out there. We're very unique in having the multi-spindle linear motor solution. And there's a lot of change there. I mean, look at the news. Tesla's got the largest giga press, you know, making parts that uh, weren't even conceived to be high pressure die cast components five years ago. You know, Elon Musk has this vision eventually to do the complete undercarriage of one die cast component. So, you know, we've got those types of solutions on the machine side now coming to market. More single spindle machines. You think about a, a long rectangular sized component to do that with one spindle fits really well in our traditional dual spindle machine envelope. Two, mach two spindles, now I've got one long rectangular battery tray tarp part and I'm just gonna hit it with single spindle. So now we've done the same thing with our Space 3 machine going up to three meters by two meters by uh, one meter and now we can do complete battery trays, you know? And it's just, it's great to see our company developing new machine solutions for the demands of the market today. Really well positioned for the future. Well, if I had any extra microphones, I feel like that deserves a mic drop. That was an amazing statement. Yes, sir. So we've kind of touched a little bit on the next question I wanted to ask you, which was, so what are some of the unique abilities of SW? Um, I like that we have those extra spindles and we're, I, I love that comparison you said about a carpool, which also reminds me of the carpool lane, so I'm getting there faster as well, there right? You but you also mentioned you're building up which allows that real estate space to be saved a little bit. But there is so much more to SW and the, the innovation that's gone into your machines. I'd love to learn more about that, and I know the audience would as well. Well, I'm going to take a sidetrack. You know, I mean, we can talk spindles and ball screws and rails and all metal and steel, all this stuff all day long. You know, it's part of our machine tool business. Um, the fact of the matter is, is our customers, when they're receiving this message and all these technical benefits, the vast majority of them see us all as the same, and we're not. Okay, we have a lot of unique aspects of our machine design which do technically set us apart. But I think what sets SW apart in a lot of ways is who we are as a company from the people perspective. You know, we have a corporate identity which focuses on four guiding principles. One is humanity. You know, it's how we're interacting with each other. You know, the respect, the, the patience we have with each other. And it's not just the way we interact internally, but also with our customers. You know, there's just a different vibe in how we interact with our people. It's just part of our, our, our ethos as a company. How are we acting together? Humanity. The second one is motivation. You know, we're in a tough business, automo automotive. It's not easy. But we want team members who, you know, they're steadfast. They see the goal line and they're going to find a way to get there. You know, stick to it. Let's get the job done. Um, one of my colleagues that started uh, about 100 days ago, you know, she commented to me that, you know, other companies, it wasn't like this. Here it's like people just get stuff done, right? And it's, it's internal, and again, that's the way we are approach our customers. The third principle is courage and responsibility. Well, what does that mean? We have to make decisions, and they're not always easy decisions, right? But, you know, we want our people to have the... The, the ability to make difficult decisions and stand by those decisions and take the responsibility that it bears with them. And it's the same thing that translates to our customers. You know, we, we encourage our customers to have that courage to take that first step with their first SW machine and see what it can get them. And, you know, we'll help them on the responsibility side. We'll be a responsible company in helping them every step of the way. And the fourth one is reliability. You know, we have to be reliable to each other. We have to be able to trust our colleagues that we're going to do the right thing. We're going to be timely in what we do. We have to be reliable to each other, but we also have to be reliable to our, our customers. So, you know, all these four principles, they really capture who we are as a personality of our company 
both internally and externally. I think that really separates us in how we interact in the marketplace. I can honestly say that that was a powerful statement. It was very infectious. I really appreciate you sharing it, the way you went through the steps. How awesome to humanize, to be a part, to make sure your customers feel the same way. Nobody wants to be a number on everyone else's sheet. To value a small business and a large business equally as humans is so important. And conveying that message, thank you so much, Kirk. That's amazing. You know, and it resonates with the customers. You know, they'll, they'll let us know that we're not the cheapest every time we have a negotiation. Um, but we do get that common feedback that you guys are the easiest to work with and you're the most reliable when it comes to projects, you know, and it's, it's, it's who we are. Wow, absolutely love it. Well, guys, I hope you've learned much, as much about SW as I have today, and this is Kurt. Kurt, thank you so much for sharing this story and this journey with the MTD audience, and thank you so much for being a part of it.